Troy Cassadaly, welcome to KC Radio. The new album and book of the same name, Troy, Things I Carry Round. How's it all been going for you, mate? What's been the response? Look, it's been a real journey, and, and it's been amazing to be able to share a lot of these memories with everyone. It's, it's probably the most personal thing I've ever done, releasing a book, Rob, but also the most personal record I think I've made in a long time, too. If you can get any more personal than the other records I've made, it surprises me. But I'm really proud of both of them. Mate, how many albums is this? It's got to be 10 or 12, surely. We've had a lot of incarnations of records. I think, I think officially it's like the 10th album, and... Uh, to win album of the year at Tamworth for it was, was an even bigger surprise. I was surprised at how fast the album came together because the book was such a, a big write. Um, it, was, it was almost like it was a given that it was, all the memories were going to be fresh. But then to, to win that was, um, was a real gobsmacked moment out there in January this year. So I'm, I'm looking forward to bringing the golden guitar we're bringing down to Victoria when we come down on tour. Yeah. And so people can you know come along and go to the merch table and feel and hold what we cherish as country music artists. Troy, it was 95, I think, when you released your first album, uh, which was Beyond the Dancing. Did you ever think it would get so big for you, and did you ever think you'd have the success that you have had? Not really, Rob. Um, I, I sort of thought when, when the first record came out, it only sort of sold about 20,000 records, and I thought to myself, well, if that's as good as it gets, I'm happy with that. I was happy just to continue playing. And then um, you skip to the next record and the next and the next, and things grow at a rapid rate of knots. A lot of the early days stuff was, was attributed to what Sony Music were, were involved with and then a lot of the other stuff was an EMI and then now I'm signed with Liberation Music in Melbourne. They're, um, they've just been such wonderful, supportive people and they're supportive to me, I think, you know, because they let you do what you've got to do and if they let you be the artist you want to be, then the rest of it just flows on. So I'm really proud of where we're sitting at this very minute. So how do you see the country music scene here in Australia, Troy? What's your opinion on it all? Look, I've been getting pretty inspired of late. Um, after the festival, normally everything sort of, you know, goes back to the way it goes and you do your thing, you slog out your miles out on the road and that's okay. But, mate, I've been hearing a lot of other artists, and, and we've had the same effect in the last 10 shows, that are just selling out. And that's, that's a really healthy thing to hear other artists going through. I was watching uh, Becky Cole on Facebook a couple of nights ago and she'd had a couple of sold-out shows. The, the McClymonts had a couple of sold-out shows. Um, I think uh, eight out of the nine that we played sold out last fortnight. And I think what it proves to me is that people do want to come out and listen to music. They love live music. In particular, they love the stories behind country music. And I'm just really blessed that people still want to come out and see us play. Troy, you mentioned Becky Cole there. I see she's getting together with your good mate Adam Harvey for a series of the great songbook concerts. Yeah, well, I, I, I was the, the person that did the first songbook with Adam Harvey and we, um, we had such a great time doing that. It was an amazing adventure, playing all your favourite old songs. And Adam had it earmarked in his uh, calendar to go away and, and, and do it again. And I said, look, I'm actually in the middle of another tour, which I am now. And so he and Becky decided to get together and do the volume two, which I think is awesome because they sing some great duets on this record. They've sent me a previous... Um, a pre-release copy so I can have a bit of a listen and I've also done a little trio with them as well on there which is, is a great inclusion. Enjoyed being a part of it. Mate, your album with Adam, that actually went to the top of the Aria charts. I mean, that's a that's an incredible success story. Yeah, it went, went number one across the whole thing yeah. until Kanye West actually kicked up a stink. His company said, oh no, yes. I think they're counting uh, bits <laughs> and pieces of the wrong thing and we weren't because they were actual sales but um, it came in number one. Um, we were really, really happy with that. And, and it sold in excess of about 90,000 records. I couldn't believe it. And it all started out of a, just a project with, with Adam and I, because he's one of my best friends um, in the industry. It just started with us sitting down having a beer in Nashville one day saying, if we do a couple of gigs when we get home of our favourite songs, which songs would they be? And then organically over the three years, that sort of turned into a weekend's worth of work each year. And then it turned into an album which was um, successful like that. And that's what friendships are all about, I reckon. And I wish him and Becky all the best. I'm sure they're going to do a great job. I'm hanging to go along to one of the shows when they get to Queensland. So, Troy, how important were these songs and the artists uh, from the songbook concept? How important were those people to you in your career? Oh, look, they were, they were all a part of the fabric of what we, we listened to as, um, as kids. And when you've got inspirations like that, I think what you do is you just draw on them every time you put pen to paper or pick up a guitar. So that they were a really big part. And, and that's why I said to Adam, I said, look, you know, ever so happy for you to go ahead and do it with Beck because, I mean, you know, she's just as much immersed in the country music history as, as what we are. 
And I think that every time I went to write a song then for things I carry around, um, I thought about those old tunes. I thought about those artists that inspired me uh, mm-hmm. incredibly when I was younger, you know. So I, I really did feel it was a big part of my growing up. What about Nashville, Troy? That's the country music capital. Any aspirations to get over there and work? Oh, look, I've never really been interested in doing the whole American thing because they do have to put you on the road for about a year just just doing interviews and getting in and out of a, of a bus to do that. And, you know, I've, I've done so many miles here. I feel comfortable in my skin uh, where I live and the people I get to play for. And so I've never really thought about it. I've always wanted my kids to grow up in Australia. Oh, that was one of my, my biggest um, things about not going over there once we'd had small children. We did six months there so I could write some songs. I'm, I'm just as much interested as, as, a, as a writer as being a singer when, when you look at the way you, you know, your life unfolds. But we put the kids in school over there for about six months while I wrote and um, did some uh, demo recordings and things for, for my publisher over there. And that was an amazing experience. But one thing I realised was that if my kids meet American kids and they end up sort of getting settled down over there, then we're going to be back in Australia living our life and they're going to be on the other side of the world with our grandkids. And I, I didn't really want that. So mm-hmm. I had to think that far ahead, I guess. And now we're home in Australia. I get to still tour. Our, our shows still sell out, and they sell out very fast at the moment, which is like wonderful, wonderful place for our industry to be in. But our kids are loving life here, and that's what I'm very, very thankful for. So what's next for you, Troy? I mean, you've won all the awards, the ARIA Awards, Golden Guitar Awards. You've been inducted into the role of renown, the Australian country music role of renown. What's left for you? Well, some time off with my family is going to be what's next. Um, I, I know that... Um, you know, I've been saying it to quite a few people that I'm just going to take a year off or a year and a half and I won't be regionally touring for a while. It's, it's because to get the inspiration you need, Rob, you need time. And you need to actually fulfil the roles that you um, signed up for as well. Husband, dad, um, caretaker. Took my daughter for her first drive this morning on her rails. <laughs> One of the most horrifying <laughs> drives I've had between the house and school oh. ever. Um, they have to start somewhere, and that's my role as a dad. So in that 12 months off that I'll be um, not touring around the place, I'll do a few festivals here and there, mm-hmm. and I'll pop up maybe, I'll try and get down to do the Folk Festival there at Port Ferry or something like that, or whatever I choose to do, I'll t- still do. But no heavy um, projects and touring, and I'll get a chance to breathe in the family, mate. Of course, before you do all that, Troy, you're going to be coming to East Gippsland, and I think you're going to have an absolute ball of a time. Yeah, once every 18 months mm. we try and get down. Um, I was down through Victoria for our Freedom Ride Tour, which was the year before last. Mm-hmm. And, um, the first gig to sell out was Bansdale RSL. Oh, yeah, good so one. What's with Bansdale? You tell me. I don't know. They love country music. The first person to talk to me about Gippsland in particular was Slim Dusty. He raved about the little, little town called Meathunk. And um, and he said to me, you wait till you get down there touring. This is very before I'd even had a record out. Mm-hmm. You wait till you get out down there touring when you get on the road as, as an artist on your, in your own right. He said, you're going to love Gippsland. And I went, where's Gippsland? And um, I had aunties that lived at Cockatoo and all over the place. They'd never mentioned this beautiful place of Gippsland. So um, I, I think coming down, you realise um, just what he was talking about. Mm-hmm. The first thing we do when we get down to Bansdale is, is get out to uh, Paynesville and oh. go fishing and that, that whole channel that runs along the side of the road there is almost like a, it's got a story of its own. Yeah, we're doing more well as well, mm-hmm. and um, one thaggy gets a, oh. gets a Guernsey. We always try and do a Sunday arv at one thaggy, yep. and God, the people that get along there just really have a good time. So, Troy, what can your fans expect if they come along to your show? It's a little different. Tell us what what's on the agenda. This show is pretty much about the book, Rob, and mm. you know that's why we haven't got a drummer. We've got a very storytelling atmosphere where it looks like a lounge room on stage with an actual lounge that, that my bass player and I sit on. And it ends up being, um, I think, one of the most personalised shows. I, it's, I play more um, different instruments on this particular show than I ever have. Really? I've got the banjo, the acoustic and the electric. And, and I think people will get to see just a real personalised side to what goes on. And we're 10 shows into the tour. And I'm very excited to share it with everyone down in Victoria. <laughs> Troy, I just think I heard your dog telling you to hurry up, Dad. Share with us who have we got there. That is that is my Jack Russell. She, <laughs> she comes up and checks on me. I'm sitting on the lounge here. She comes up and checks on me to make sure I'm all right. <laughs> oh, Troy. <laughs> Look, I, I, I love our little Tilly. And um, she, she just, she's never normally been a part of interviews, to tell you the truth, Rob. But, um, but she's a wonderful dog. And, um, and she's a little part of our life that we really enjoy being around. And I think one thing I really, really love is the fact that when I come home, 
Um, sometimes Laurel will video her, my wife will video her when the, when I get out of the car, oh. and she just goes crazy. So oh. we're very privileged. Oh, that's beautiful, Troy. Well, listen, I'll let you go, mate, and I'll let Tilly have some of your time. It's been great talking to you. Finally, Troy, a quick message, mate, to all your fans that are planning on coming along and seeing you at uh, at your shows throughout Victoria. Yeah, oh, look, I think that um, I don't think I've done anything in my career on the road as personal as this, and I want people to feel like they've um, actually come into my house. And the the sentiment from the last ten shows has been they felt like they were in my lounge room. Um, so it is a very up close personal show, um, and I, I really am looking forward to showing everyone what it's all about because we're really proud of the results of it. Well, the things I carry round. That is the book. That is the album, and of course the shows that are going to be coming up throughout Victoria. Troy, thanks very, very much for your time once again, mate, and I wish you well. Thanks for being part of KC Radio. Rob, it's a pleasure, and g'day to all your listeners. Um, KC Radio always have been really, really big supporters of country music in particular, so I just want to say thank you.